Hello boys and girls and horror fans, welcome to my latest Fright Fest 2020 review. On this video I will be talking about the brilliantly titled Acra Slash. And you've got to say it like that, you can't say it any other way. I'll say it once more. Acra Slash. That's better, yeah. I, I got the full force behind my words that time. So this is from 2018, although it's debuting really in the UK for Fright Fest and of course in the online version. Before I get to, I'm going to do it again, Acra Slash. Slightly different that time. I should actually say there was a short film that appeared before the main feature and this totally threw me off because it just went into it and there was no mention of a short film beforehand and also it's quite a long short film it's like half an hour so for a while I thought well this must be the feature but at the same time I was thinking it can't be the feature because I know what Acre Slash is I know well the premise and I was expecting kind of you know hot shadow like teens to show up i was expecting blood and guts and <laughs> really didn't get any of that or not a lot of it anyway in the film so the short film i'll just mention quickly was called day 14 which someone told me later thanks to megan for filling me in on that and yeah it's worth checking out it's quite a fitting little short film because it actually is on the theme of the pandemic because they use like sort of like a zombie like apocalypse as a pandemic like type thing and it's quite a good one because it actually ends on a positive note it's almost like saying there is hope there is light at the end of the tunnel we can get through this this situation we're in but yeah it's called day 14 because it's it's counting down the, the days in that kind of horror type way where you have a sister a teenage sister looking after a younger brother and their mother has been infected by by the virus and she's upstairs she's locked herself away in a room and you have this coming of age thing where the daughter obviously has to step up and look after the brother but the mother has left detailed instructions she's left all these different like letters or notes in like envelopes and it's got the different days on the envelopes and it's just like guiding the um the daughter what to do for each day and it's re really good stuff because it, it's like it, it gives you this sense of rules and it gives you the sense of well she's a medical nurse and she kind of has all this laid out for her daughter so on, on the 14th day it's like the day where she she advises checking on her basically um to see if there's there's any sign sign of life any sign that she's like come out of and is no longer infected sort of thing and she gives the like details about well if my eyes are a certain color that means i haven't sort of thing and obviously it's 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 quite touching because she's telling the daughter well there will come a point where you might just have to kill me um and then very emotional stuff because it's she leaves an emotional letter but the kind of turn on it is that she does come out of it and, and they do start living again as a family, which is almost a swerve in itself because I I think you'll maybe set up to believe that, yeah, things aren't going to end so well for the mother. But So it's a nice little positive film. It's called Day 14, so if you want to try and see if you can find it online. But it is pre pretty funny because... I didn't know there was a short film beforehand and I thought well this must be Acra Slash and it doesn't look like Acra Slash to me and and then I had that deflated feeling when the film ended I thought okay maybe it wasn't Acra Slash and of course it wasn't but there you have it that, that's day 14 I, I thought, thought that was worth worth talking about and it's hilarious really because you couldn't get the short film to be any different from the main feature because this acro slash is this sort of really classic full-on exportation 
as I said, shallow sort of like young people, lots of like sort of um, sexy sort of people like flaunting their bits about everyone's bonking everyone else. It's all very sort of soapy and in your face, but it slowly builds to the gore, to the dismemberment. Um, and there's a certain style to it, a certain cheesy sort of style with kind of cheesy over the top like dialogues and a certain kind of like retro type of soundtrack. So I will say that this this same director who really clearly knows his stuff when it comes to exploitation cinema, he his previous film which stop it. Stop it. Which I just have to see now, having seen this and, and just hearing about it, was about a guy who starts killing people every time he hears disco music. I'm sorry, I just have to see that movie now. That that sounds pretty insane. Even more than this, because this is quite, quite a familiar type premise. Um, it's almost like sort of riffing off like classic slasher type movies so it, it's all set at like this pool um yeah this pool whatever you want to call it pool park that that's the word i was looking for pool park and it's basically like this whole high school class is like graduated and it's tradition then they go to this pool park every summer the graduating class that is and they, they have a party they get down stuff like that but in the background there's this legend of 30 years ago or something like that there were these famous murders at, at, at this pool park and it seems duh, 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 then the murders have come back but that's where we get a whole murder mystery angle sort of thrown in where mysterious things start to happen. People start dying. Someone rigs the pool side at one point. They're having this, this insanely over the top like contest where you get triple sides and they're all, you get teams. It's like this big, like, fucking sporting event it's almost like the sort of thing you can imagine them doing in america where they're getting really psyched up for like this triple sort of threat of like poolside teams and but one of them has been rigged with blades and that's kind of the image on, on like the sort of poster i've seen of like the unfortunate victims who go down and they collide into the blade so but it's, it's really good fun. It's kind of like if someone had like Riverdale, Baywatch and something like Piranha or maybe Friday the 13th and just threw, threw it into a blender. It, as I said, it does have this certain sort of neon type style. It's all very kind of um, kind of a, a bit sort of psychedelic and very sort of bright and thrown up. Um, so we have this opening with these, these various like teen characters. You have this really shallow, like redhead Alice, I think her name is. And, and she, she has some like hilarious lines, but she's just like the sort of leader, the one who's like meant to, um, like guide the party and, and kind of put on the event. And of course she's having a thing with like the guy who runs the place, Paul, who's like this classic, kind of like um almost like just this stud this roguish sort of um guy who's just just a bit of a douche as well just a bit over the hill but alice who who's of, of course really hot <laughs> she has some hilarious lines so she mentions the police at one point let's do it police style that's what we're going to be doing at the party and she says hey we've been doing this for 30 years don't fuck it up now and and yet yeah, she she has some pretty pretty badass lines but and you get various other characters you have this character of josh who in a movie like this is kind of like the hero is kind of like the likable sort of guy and of course he's in a band he's in like this cheesy band called the blades with their like big happy day style leather jackets and their sunglasses and oh my god at one point you get like this performance where where the the 
the camera's just cutting around like music video style cut 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 it's insane but they perform this like this form cheesy rock number sunglasses at night and the way this is how this whole scene is edited together it is is just so hilarious it's like oh my god this this is cheesy and then some but but it's brilliant because you you get all these different like cameos and different kind of nods to this sort of genre to the soap genre and to obviously the slasher genre and you get these these little clicks and these gangs so josh and his his gang are kind of like opposing like the, the kind of typical like jocks or the bullies but you also have um i sort of forget his name now but Tommy, I think. Tommy, of course, such a classic, like, bully sort of name. But he's one of the guys who, like, is like a lifeguard type thing. And he's in a relationship with this girl who Josh went to high school with, who's, again, really, really beautiful, outstanding looks. Um, but there's a rivalry between them and this sort of works into the plot. So so they work all the various soap sort of angles into the plot to to, to just give you like red herrings. Um but yeah, there's all all sorts of um cheesiness going on, all sorts of like disco type parties and antics and, and bad dancing. Um but yeah, there's this rivalry, as I said, between Josh and between um Tommy, as I said, and and there's this 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 subplot where Alice finds out that Paul, who's the the um the the guy who runs the place, he's potentially trying to sell it off to Josh's father. Josh's father, who's like this um this kind of I can't remember how I described him actually, but but yeah, he just looks like this classic sort of like um upmarket sort of heel type thing he's almost like someone you would have in wrestling as the posh or snobby heel um yeah he's he's too he's trying to make an effort but he's not really making an effort to like spend time with josh josh is mad obviously i'm, I'm graduating at my band's performing and hey what why aren't you here because he's too busy having dinner with Paul's wife so it's one of those everyone's seeing everyone there's all these connections but you do get this extra bit of drama where Alice overhears then Josh's dad might be buying the whole Paul park um and she then gives shit to Paul and I, I love Paul's line in this because she she acu Alice accuses him of lying and Paul's like hey I'm a good liar <laughs> it's almost like he's bragging of Ella hey I'm a good liar and there's some fun running gags. There's like one of the characters is called Chad and he's like one of the members of the band. And throughout the film, people just keep calling him the wrong name. And it's something beginning with C. Not 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 the not the crude one, I have to say, but <laughs> it's like names beginning with C that sound like Chad. So he's called Chip at one point. I think you think he's called Chris. But yeah, three or four different names. <laughs> So that's a really fun running running sort of gag. Um, I think actually Paul's wife, who who also obviously owns the beach park, um, and she like sort of runs the competition, this poolside competition. She actually is maybe steals the film in many ways because she she's really got it going on and she's a total badass she really puts Paul in his place a few different times but yeah it's like there's she actually does have the best line of the movie and and it's the line where she's trying to make Paul jealous with like one of it's another one out of the band because of course it is and he, he's like the nerdy sort of character and she's just doing it to, to make Paul jealous because his name's Slim and it's the first time he's had sex so he's not very good at it but it's like my name's Slim and she's like 
Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's, it's, it's so brilliant. But yeah, the whole thing is just so over the top and cheesy. I think also the fact that they're called the Blade, the band, that, that, that's kind of so perfect. But there's these various sort of teases throughout the film, these various, just to use a crude sort of slightly sexist term, but cock teases, because the film does take its time and there's like sort of stuff thrown in so so at one point there's this running gag with like a mother and the, her her son and they're just there they're like regular sort of customers they're not there for like the graduation party or anything so uh, the running gag with them is that he's like young and he's impressionable and he's seeing all like this debauchery and all sort of disgusting stuff going on and the mother's like oh my god this is outrageous my my son's young he doesn't want to see that we didn't come here for this <laughs> and then there's all sorts of like gross out type humor in, involved in them um but at one point you get a fight and the boy accidentally like i think gets hit hit or something and it's just like a fight which has spoiled out of control between josh and pachin tommy and other people have got involved and it's like oh my god i'm sorry i'm sorry it was an accident and then gross things happening in the pool i think the ultimate cock sort of tease it is that um and i'll start stop using that term now because i'm sorry but the, the ultimate sort of like sort of kind of fake out is that you have a, like a teenage girl have her like period her first period which is when um paula actually takes her under a wing and it's like you know takes her in but yeah she has a period but the way it's shot is is so funny because it's shot like she's being attacked by someone because it's this slow-mo of her in the pool and blood coming from her and then you see i think it's paula running towards her in like a slow motion type shot so it's like this classic tease and something else is happening to her but it just happens to be her period now there's this guy who's like the janitor of the ball pool like this whole crusty sort of guy and he has all these like hilarious but cheesy like puns and like just gags to do with sex sort of thing but he's like that that archetype you know of this the kind of weird sleazy old guy who is set up as a red herring who may be involved he may actually be the killer or know something about it and he's not but he's set up that way and the actor i i, I recognize i just can't think who it is or i can't think what i've seen him in but he's he's a really hilarious sort of side character and I think once you get to like the, the dismemberment and the blades on the slide and just the over the topness, I, I I think it's a lot of fun. It does deliver. It takes quite a long time getting to that, which may be my only thing. I mean, maybe they could have speeded that up a, a little bit more, but the film has a lot of fun and I had a lot of fun with the film and it has definitely has a classic wink wink nudge nudge twist sort of ending which is kind of fun but i think the whole point is that it's just bonkers and and you you're not you're not quite sure where you are at the end maybe but hey just throw in another twist just for the fun of it which i won't spoil but that's acro slash great title and and a blast as a film i think this guy really knows what he's doing and what films he's referencing and and just an insane sort of bash of a film um and i'm down to see more from this director you know just switch off your brain and have fun so i will give it a 6.5 out of 10 so that's acro slash um coming to a pool party near you soon so check it out and i have one more fright fest review to come up which will be the swerve but like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Look out for more horror movie reviews coming soon, including obviously tons and tons in the month of October because it is the month for ghouls, goblins and everything else. 
So I'll see you guys again soon. Goodbye.